hello everyone you're welcome to my youtube channel my name is precious in case you've not subscribed to my youtube channel or probably this is your first time of coming across my video please kindly consider subscribing and put on the notification button in case i make other nice videos you can also come across them all right thank you so today we want to look at the concept of playing geometry so by the name it's already very obvious that there is another kind of geometry aside the plane all right so now basically for high school students or in geometry general we have uh, two types okay so one is what we call the plane geometry and then the second is what we call the circle geometry all right so meanwhile in general what is geometry so geometry has to do with uh, uh, the aspect of mathematics that involves you know the angles formed by different shapes okay so if those shapes or oh, sorry if the angles that we are discussing are formed by plane shapes remember plane shapes starting from normal straight lines triangles and other polygons then you call that geometry a plane geometry so but if it is now the study of angles formed on a circle the different kinds of angles you can see on a circle. Of course, when we get there, we're going to look at what we call the circle theorems that discusses the different kinds of angles that can be formed on a circle. Okay, so in that case, you now know that you're discussing the concept of circle geometry. All right, so now to begin this, we are going to start uh, looking at the basic elements for the discussion of geometry looking at the basic uh, or the basics of uh, the study of plane geometry we are going to be looking at the concept of angles like i mentioned what is an angle so we now look at angles formed on straight lines or on lines and then we look at angles formed on triangles okay so now these uh, are going to be very fundamental to other aspects of plane geometry that we're going to be looking at. Now, I want you to understand that the concept of angles, plane geometry, even circle geometry, are actually the easiest part of mathematics. But then if you don't get to take notice or to be very careful with the theorems or properties of these angles on different shapes, that's where it becomes very complicated. But then these are very easy things to handle. All right, so let's begin. Firstly, what is an angle? So by definition, I will say that an angle is simply a curved distance covered between two lines that intersect at a point. So the implication is that for an angle to be formed, there must be the intersection of two lines, right? So if I have two lines intersecting at a point, now their meeting point, let me call it A, and then now recall that we label lines in mathematics. So the first line is AB, while the second line could probably be AC. So that means their meeting point is A, all right? So they curved distance between the two points, sorry, between the two lines that is formed over this intersection point is called the angle between them. Right, so that's how angles are formed. There must be intersection of lines for you to form an angle. All right, so and that is the beginning. Now, next is, is to look at how to name angles. Of course, I think that should be very obvious to us. So, because of the names of the points you have here, then you should also be able to name angles. And how do we name angle? To name this angle, let me call it X. To name it, you are going to make use of this line and this line. So starting from this point, usually we go alphabetical. And so every angle is made up of three alphabets. So the point where the angle is formed is always at the center. So this A will usually be at the center. Then you these other two points that make up the three angles, uh, the, the, the lines that form the angle now will now be on either side. Usually we'll go alphabetical. So here we'll now come first. So you have angle B, A, C. So, and then there's usually a carat sign on top of the point where the angle is formed. So you can either write it this way or you can write it this way, angle, sorry. You can write it as angle B, A, C. All right, some people can write as C, A, B. Uh, it's not as though it is wrong, 
but of course we prefer to go alphabetical in order so what that means is that if i have something like this let's say that this is a triangle here is a b c if i want to mention or label this angle now that's going to be a b c angle a b c if i want to label so this is equal to x if i want to label this let's say y so my y is going to be equal to what b a c okay so you always go alphabetical if i want to label here let's say z my z is going to be equal to a c b all right so you go from a then go to the point where the angle is formed and then you finish at the final letter all right so that's how to name angles okay so now to further go on our foundation we are going to now look at when angles are formed they can be formed and the two lines will have different properties or different shapes or whatever so these are basic things i want you to take note of one is that you can form an angle between two perpendicular lines or you can form many angles between two perpendicular lines and that is when the two lines are of this nature remember in mathematics whether it looks very perpendicular you know perpendicularity means angle 90 degrees you are not permitted to assume you must be told that it is perpendicular before you make use of it and how are you told all right so the sign of perpendicularity must be here so once that perpendicularity sign is there you know that those two lines are perpendicular so if we have angles formed in in between two perpendicular lines let's take it three angles whatever so this is angle a angle b and angle c okay so there is a rule now i'm discussing the different properties or the different ways angles can be formed and the rules that guide the usage okay so the rules for angles formed between perpendicular lines is that their sum is always equal to 90 degrees all right so what that means is that if i do a plus b plus c from this diagram it should be equal to what 90 degrees all right so that is the first now the second i can also form angles on a straight line so angles can be formed on a straight line Okay, so if angles are formed on a straight line, let's say of this nature, something like this. Okay, in this case, there are two angles here. Let's take it that this is X and this is angle Y. So because these angles are on a straight line, the rule that guides this one says that the sum of angles on a straight line is always equal to 180 degrees. So what that means for this shape is that X plus y is equal to 180 degrees okay so and then there is also another one i want us to see as a foundation before we look at examples we can also form angles around a point and we call that angles at a point okay now these ones we call angles on perpendicular lines angles on a straight line and then so this is called angles on a point right so if angles are formed on a point okay so let's assume that this is the point and you have different angles formed on this point maybe something like this okay so let's take it that this angle a b c d and e formed around a particular point so the rule or the property there says that the sum of all the angles at a point is always equal to 360 that means the angle round a circle okay so what that means is that for this diagram if you add a to b to c to d to e that everything is going to give you a 360 degrees remember that degree is the unit for angles okay so just to mention that okay so with this information it is easy to begin to do some examples like we have here on the board already 
So here we are to find the value. What do you do with those examples? So now, like I said, that it is these properties that we have shown you, especially for these three cases where I've shown here, that guides you in solving problems like this. Now, when we now move further to triangles, to other shapes, you now begin to look for the properties or the theorems that guide angles formed on those shapes. If we're talking about angles formed on a triangle, what are the rules that guide angles formed on a triangle? And of course, we are going to look at that. Okay, so here it says we should find the values of X and Y uh in the following shapes here of course here y is missing and then the other three x is missing so i'm going to do one two and four and i will allow you to do three give me your answer as a comment in the comment section all right so solution now by what we are giving so firstly you need to understand which of the rules will help you here now you can see that this is angles on a straight line so here we have angles on a straight line. Here we have angle um, around a point. Here is also angles around a point. Okay, so quickly, let's begin with the first one. So now since these are angles on a point, and they're, sorry, on a straight line, and there are two of them, so the rule says that if I add the two of them, that's y plus 35 degrees, I should get 180 degrees. Okay, so remember, under geometry, whatever you do, you must state the reason why you have done so. So this is because of angles on a straight line. Okay, and so immediately you state your reason, then you now simplify. So to get my Y, I'll just take 35 to this side, which is 180 minus 35 degrees. Therefore, my Y is 100 and 45 degrees and then okay so let's quickly look at example two so for number two it's also angles on a straight line so i will just add everything plus 2x plus 50 degrees so everything will be equal to 180 degrees and my reason is the same as what is up here so here i will now try to simplify which is 5x, that's adding 3x plus 2x, and then I will take 50 to this other side, that will be 180 minus 50, which is equal to 130. So my x alone will be 130 all over 5, and that is equal to 26 degrees. Okay, so that's the solution for 1 and 2. So like I said, I'm going to look at example 4 now. Okay, so looking at example 4, you ask yourself, how many angles do we have here? There are three of them. So we have 150x and then this other one not given. However, there's an information that is given there that tells us what that angle is. And that is the perpendicular sign. So that means this is angle 90 degrees. Okay, so in that case, for number 4, so what it means is that if I add 150 to 90 to x, everything should be equal to 360. Why? Because it is angles at a point. Remember, you can use this symbol to represent angles. Angles at a point, okay? Although it's just an abbreviation. All right, so if I add these two, I will get 240 plus x is equal to 360. Therefore, my x alone will be 360. This coming over here will be minus 240. And that is 180 degrees. Okay, so like I said, I would like you to look at these other examples and let me have what your answer is. That's number three in the comment section. Okay.